Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. OMG, baby. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. I'm Justin Fox. I'm joined here by Jeff Clark with Favoland. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much for joining me on today's show. Thank you so much. Awesome. So let's jump right in. People may or may not know you. You're the CEO, founder and CEO of Favoland. Um, you're currently raising capital on the backers platform. So if people want to check that out, the offering is live um, on uh, portal.backers.ca or just backers.ca. Check out Favoland, favoland.com. So let's talk. dive right in. Um, how's it going with Favoland? I know we've had some conversations, obviously, off off, off air, but tell me a little bit about, update everyone on what's happening with Favoland. It's a challenging marketplace. It's uh, I've been building Favoland for two and a half years. I'm happy to announce that we finally launched this past February. We soft launched this past February. So that what does that mean? Soft launch means we haven't launched it to the public. We're just doing it. In, we're doing an internal launch. And now we're beta testing. And as we beta test, we find out where the problems are and what we need to fix. So we've discovered that we pivoted a few times to build our ingredient database and rating system, and it really is not working. So we realized there's a problem here. So I'm starting to pivot again. This will be my third pivot. Now we're pivoting to building an AI-driven uh, beauty ingredient database and rating system. This will be the first ever being built in the beauty industry. So we'll be the first to doing this. This is going to give us a more accurate rating of products, uh, more information, more reliable it's going to make a lot better experience for any user. Um, the challenge is, is that um, I've, I've invested $200,000 to build a platform to where we are today. And to build this AI component is going to cost me about another $160,000. But I only have to put out like $80,000 in cash. Okay. The other $80,000 will be equity. So my focus is I got to raise $80,000 capital right now. And this okay. is going to help me build a product that's going to give us a huge differentiator from our competition and it's going to give us a huge marketing and PR campaign so we can market it and PR it to give us an audience focus. So our goal in the first 18 months on, on Favoline is to get 500,000 users. I'm hoping that will be 5 million to 50 million. So we're going to be a lot further ahead by building this, this, this platform. So, so let's take a step back. Obviously you, you say you're, You've kind of pivoted a little bit after realizing, you know, from a data perspective, um, you're now looking to utilize AI. Why don't you tell people what sort of Favoland is um, as a, as a as a platform? What what is the problem that it's it's solving in the in a five in the or world? ten seconds? So Favoland yeah. is a personalized beauty review and recommendation platform. So we help consumers discover what's in their beauty products. Right. Our competitors focus solely on product ingredients. Favoland goes six steps further. We talk about the description of the product. Then we talk about the ingredients using the AI-driven database that will give us a lot more of an accurate reading. And then we go in to talk about ethics, scents, textures, sustainability, and traceability. So as a consumer, you get a lot of more information to help you make a decision that that product aligns with your personal needs and right. your values. Right, right, right. Okay, so yeah, so beauty product, essentially reviews and ratings. Um, so you, people can understand, you know, how how what they're putting on their skin or in their bodies um, is potentially going to affect them, right? And you mentioned a few different reasons maybe that people might be concerned in the so past. So in the beauty industry, yeah. Unfortunately, the industry is, is, is a $750 billion industry. It's not regulated globally. Right. Every country has their own restrictions. Europe does the best job. They ban over 3,000 ingredients that go on beauty products. Right. You get to the USA and they only ban 30 products. Exact same products, exact same ingredients going to human consumers. Europe bans 3,000. USA bans 30. In Canada, we up the ante to 600, but it's still a far cry from 3,000. Right. So most of the products sold in North America are carcinogenic, endocrine disruptors, 
Um, if you're pregnant, they could give you a miscarriage. They'll give you rashes on your face, red marks on your face, pimples on your face. There's a lot of things that can happen in right. our climate because we they're not regulated. It's interesting. I mean, we've talked about this a few times. Uh, this just sort of popped into my head. These manufacturers are obviously manufacturing this the products for both markets correct i would correct. i would assume so and they have so, a different ingredient combination for both markets right what well, like well, i mean not that we can rely on corporations so to, in, in united to, states that yeah. product costs two dollars and fifty cents to launch but in the europe it may cost four dollars and fifty cents so because so the cost a unit right. to launch it in america because they use cheaper quality products I, that's why i was wondering what is there an incentive for them to still continue to use you know arguably harmful harmful ingredients uh in north america but uh, obviously there is that's the idea i'm going to tell you the united states is unfortunately the united states makes money off disease so they're not looking to prevent this from happening right (laughs) yeah don't don't tell us how you really think no i'm just kidding but that's That's not yeah yeah, no no i know this is what i believe but i I could be i could be incorrect and wrong i'm not i know i'm percent sure yeah yeah. no but that's no for sure i mean People talk about that. So, so let's talk a little bit about so Faveland. Obviously, there's there's you talk about c- competitors. I think we're for the most part those competitors are actually overseas, or are they in the U.S. or where where would the competitors typically be based? Our main competitor is based in France. Okay, so you're our second. Our second competitor is based in Canada. Okay, and then we have a third competitor that would be third in line would be based in the United States. Unfortunately, the United States doesn't have the structure and the infrastructure to build a system like this. Okay, so so for the Canadian and the European, the French company, um, what what? So they're just looking at the ingredients, purely looking at the ingredients. That's that's the model they have. Walk us through what that kind of looks. They like. collect data. Okay, the old model. Of, so when I was collecting data, the reason the way I was collecting data, I had a data entry person that was doing all the data entry person. Right. The data entry person could only enter um, so so much at, in a day or whatever. I think it was 200 products a day. So it became 600 products a month. And then I went, okay, we got 100,000 products. Right. And what it, the, what it ended up doing to my analysis is maybe it was 2,000 products a day. I it was going to take two two years to to get right. the 100,000 products on Favaland. I just said, that's not going to work. And right. the problem is the information the data people collect because they're a low level pay, they're, it's not accurate. It's not reliable. It's not double confirmed, triple confirmed, like it is going to be on AI. AI, we can set up to double confirm, triple confirm all the information, and then we can grade all the information. So what we're doing on AI is we're going to grade it. So we're going to let you know this information came from a reliable, trusted party. That's going to be an A grade. This came from a second reliable, trusted party. So it's going to be a grade B. Third is going to be a grade C. And then fourth is going to be a grade D. And then E and F, it's just a failure. So we want to try and we're going to try and give them a rating of what this product, so they know where the product, how the product stands in the in the community, and then the reliability of the information that you're providing. Yes. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, I, I, I'll I'll sort of go off. You know, this is the first we're talking about the AI aspect of this. I think in as in as you know in depth, at least regarding Favorland and, and this conversation, what you know, everyone sort of is trying to implement AI. You know, is there a you know uh, existing database of the products, or are you feeding the data, or how are you training your LLM right for, uh, for the AI aspect of Favaland? Unfortunately, there's not an existing database. Right. Uh, we have to um, build and create the database. Okay. It's, the industry doesn't have a database that it just exists. Some people have a database for certain parts of it. Mm-hmm. They're very protective and they don't want to share. Of course. It's not a community driven. Right. They it's mine. They don't want to share. Right. I'm like, why don't you want to share? I'm in a sharing environment. I share everything. I'm trying to help others. It's not about my personal needs. They're focused on their personal needs. They're not focused on helping others. Right. I, Fableland, is here to help others. We're here to help the, the community. The so consumer. we want to give the community. So we're building the product for the community. Right. So, so yeah, you're, I mean, a lot of different methods I'm sure will be used to, to acquire or access that data. Um, let's, let's jump a little bit into a, a slightly different aspect of this. I know we talked just before this offline as well about, um, you know, what you're looking for, obviously you're looking to raise capital um, and your, your offering is live on, on the backers platform. 
Backers. Ca. Most important, Check it out. you have to focus on. You guys you can invest as little as a hundred dollars. Yeah, a little as a hundred dollars, up to twenty five hundred dollars on the backers platform. And our goal at Favorland is to make sure you get a healthy return. So our mm -hmm. focus and my focus is to make sure you get ten to thirty times your money back. So what does that mean? If you invest twenty five hundred, you can get twenty five thousand to seventy five thousand dollars back. What real estate deal can you walk into, put $2,500 back down and get $25,000 back? Where can you do that in the marketplace? It's not very, it's no, there's nowhere you can do it. I mean, obviously there's, there's so no guarantees. You invest but... in a technology company. If you invest in technology, technology can give you huge returns. Yeah, definitely. And, and just to clarify, I mean, there's obviously no guarantees, but the, you know, if you no are guarantees. investing in an early stage company with, with growth opportunity in a marketplace, that's obviously growing, you know, there's definitely it's high risk, high reward, but you know, there is definitely a uh, potential or opportunity there. So, so, I mean, let's jump into the other side. So definitely, you know, check out the uh, Favorland offering on backers. If it's something that's of interest to you, um, feel free to reach out to Jeff too. I mean, on LinkedIn, um, there's a link there as well to to connect with him. But I was going to say this, Jeff, um, with regards to the other side, I know we talked a little bit about sort of the affiliates and maybe working through some of these smaller brands, smaller uh, organizations that you'd be looking to kind of bring on um, on that side of of the business. What what if if a if a small brand is looking to kind of make a name for themselves and obviously get their get their brand and their products, you know, if they have, you know, various aspects of their products that are beneficial, obviously to, to your users, how can they go about um, showcasing and being a part of the Favoland uh, platform? So Favoland is a double-sided marketplace. So when you come to Favoland, you can go to the consumer side or you can go to the business side. If you're a business, you'd click on the business side and the business side, you can, you can create a profile you can upload all your products and you can upload all your information. You can do this all today for free. In the future, we're going we're to charge, but we're going to charge a minimal fee of one cent and up for each product that you list, depending on how many products you list. If you list 50,000 products, you're going to pay a lower fee than if you list 10 products. Right. Because there has to be a profit. There's not a big profit, obviously. If you list 10 products and we charge you $4 a product, what is that? That's $40. Right. Whereas somebody that has 50,000 products, they may pay one cent or 12, 1.2 cents each. They may pay $600 a month. Right. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely economies of scale. So so people can participate um, by uploading their products um, through the use, I assume, of you know some sort of CSV file or something along those lines or individually up uploading them. Um, and then they can affiliate marketing. So if you have affiliate marketing. Um, established in your, a lot of retailers today have affiliate marketing built into their, their business model. Yeah. What they do in affiliate marketing is they provide you with a link to yeah. the affiliate marketing to promote their products that track all the sales and revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're part of a, a an existing affiliate program, you then would be driving traffic to them. Um, 100%. Yeah. So they can, they can see sales in that way. And then I, I would assume you would also then benefit from that, they would then likely offer you some sort of affiliate uh, commission. Piece, commission on, uh, you know, through like a, a, you know, I'm familiar with Commission Junction or CJ uh, would be one. I'm sure there's others out there. So, there's, okay. There's, so there's, there's lots of them. There's lots of them for sure. So if you're a brand, um, a, you know, a consumer health or beauty product brand looking to get into the marketplace and you want to, you know, an access to a way to distribute or market or, or get your brand out there, obviously Favorland becomes a, a great method. Um, and then you can work in conjunction. They can provide the information that would become like an A plus, I would assume sort of source of, of information. If the actual, you know, manufacturer or producer is providing the data and the ingredients and the information about that, right. I would assume that would give it a, a better, uh, score, if you will, from the reliability of the uh, of the of the content that you're you're showcasing. Um, reliability of the content has nothing to do with where you how you register, how you, where you register. It's all about your product. All we do is honestly report. So we're why we're using AI is to give us a more accurate rating of your of your product. If you it, the 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 reality of the industry is if you if you have carcinogenic ingredients in your product, you're going to get a poor rating. Right. 
<laughs> if you're an endocrine disruptor, you're going to get a poor rating. If I'm pregnant and you can give me a miscarriage, you're going to get a poor rating. Anything that's going to cause bodily harm to a person, you're going to get a poor rating. This is just reality. Right. Okay. So I um, misunderstood that. I thought I thought the value of the data was part of the the valuation of the of the A B C D, but it's just or an honest, purely or the an ingredients. Honest company. Yeah, yeah. You cannot pay for us. You cannot buy us. We charge flat fees for your services. Right. And we report honestly. Everything we're doing is 100% legit. We're here to build transparency and trust with consumers because they don't have it in the industry. Within the health and beauty industry. Cool. So, okay. Talk a little bit about the consumer. Let's um, give us some use cases. I know we've seen some videos that you've posted on social media, of sort of like stories or examples of somebody or someone who, um, you know, would benefit potentially from, um, from your services, like kind of use cases, if you will. So we first thing we do is we focus on people that have skin issues. One in three people in North America have a skin issue. In North America, that's Canada, USA, that's 130 million people. In the USA alone, 80 million people have allergies. Now we have 210 million people with skin issues or an allergy. If you have a skin issue or an allergy, you're gonna go online to do research to make sure you're not gonna elevate your issue, you're gonna reduce your issue. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Favorland platform will help. The next thing that we recognize is that there's, there's people with religious beliefs. Uh, the biggest religious belief is Muslims. Muslims only can eat halal food. What about right. their beauty products? Well, they got to be halal certified. That means made with specific ingredients that are processed a certain way that have halal certification. So that is that in the United States is only an 8 million person market, but globally it climbs to 2 billion people. It's one of the largest religions in the world. Right. Of course. What are the religions that follow a strict, strict regiment. That's, that's the number one thing. Um, the next thing is personal preferences. I'm a vegan. I don't want to put meat products on my face. I don't want to hurt animals. So I'm not going to put crustaceans on my face, meat products on my face. It helps us find clean and clean ingredients for them. So then there's people like that. Then I want to, I'm a consumer who wants to buy organic products. How do we find organic products? Our platform will help you with all these needs. So, Perfect. So there's, I mean, there's obviously a number of different value propositions there to the to the end user um, that's using. And and I want to clarify for those that are watching, you know, this includes everyone because you know, shampoo, to like everyone uses when we talk beauty products. You know, even myself early on, I was thinking, you know, makeup, makeup only. It's pretty much every product, deodorant, you know, everything that that is you know used by uh, by individuals. So it affects. It affects everyone, you know, creams, sunscreen, sun, you know, lotions, all that sort of stuff, right? Um, so this is applicable to, you know, to everyone pretty much. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit? We'll 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 end it here in a few minutes, but why don't you touch on you kind of threw out the you know the potential return on investment? You know, why don't you talk away about maybe some of the exit strategies of how you might realize that return on investment for investors? Um, and what kind of potential sort of growth or revenue um, you you can see over the next, you know, sort of one, three, five years, if you will. All that stuff is in my financial projections that I don't have at the top of my head. That's the challenge. Okay. Um, I believe that we're, we're, our goal is to get to three to $4 million in revenue in the next three years. Okay. Um, we're trying to get to a valuation of $30 million. In okay. order to do that, we've got to convert users. If right. we get a million users paying $12 a month, that's our fee. So our subscription fee in the beauty industry, the way it works is that all my competitors charge a subscription fee of $21 to $60 a year. Right. At Favoland, we've chopped it down and said $12. We don't want to make this absorbably expensive. We want to make it easy for people to purchase. So we said, we're going to make it $1 a month, mm -hmm. $12 a year. So most people could should be able to afford it. And our goal is to make sure that we can bring in a, a million users and a million users at $12 is $12 million a year. Right. In our industry, you're valued at five times your revenue in our industry. Your recurring so that revenue. Means that we have a $60 million valuation. Right. So if you had an investment at our devaluation today at $3 million and it's now $60 million, That's you would be getting- um, 20X. No, you'd be getting uh, 60 times your revenue. So- 
um, at 30 times, at 30,000, 10 times revenue would be 300,000, right? And at 30 times, it would be 900,000. You'd be getting a lot more. You'd be getting like 1.8 million off your $30,000 investment. Right. So, so definitely there's a, there's a huge opportunity in, in the marketplace there's obviously seems as though no one's, no one's doing this currently. And obviously the AI component, you know, will, will allow you to scale that sort of to all brands, all products, you know, much more quickly. Um, cool. So where can people let's find go back to the AI? Yeah. Let's just talk about a little bit more about the AI component. Yeah, so yeah. I'm hiring these AI developers for six months. The first phase is the AI beauty ingredient database and rating system is going to take three months. That's the biggest phase. Right. And then after that, we have six more phases that we're going to build in AI. So we're going to build a total of seven phases in AI in the next six months. And we're going to launch them all in the fable end. There's no one else in the beauty industry doing what we're doing in the market that we're in, which is beauty review and recommendation web companies. Nice. So, so, I mean, obviously you're somewhat revolutionary, right? In, in what you're 100%. doing. Yeah. yeah. So 100%. that's, and, and, Vancouver based. So, I mean, we, we had you out at a pitch uh, a couple, maybe a month or so ago, two months ago, uh, where some people were there, had some interesting questions as well. So we'll likely be doing that again soon. So stay tuned. Uh, check out Jeff's offering on backers.ca. Go through, you can click through, check out Favland. Check, can they check out favland.com? I know you kind of did a soft launch. Is there anything? Yeah, Fableland.com. Go to Fableland.com. Oh, we'll check it out. Yeah. Look at the back end. Look at everything else. But just remember, we're beta testing. Beta testing yeah, yeah. means it's not a perfect world. We're working on perfection. We're building it out for sure. Exactly. So, well, Jeff, I appreciate you joining me here today. I know we've um, got some other content coming out in the next couple of days. So, everyone else, this is uh, Justin Fox from Backers. Check out backers.ca. Invest uh, in startups on backers.ca or raise capital. Jeff Clark uh, from Fableland dot com uh founder and ceo thanks jeff appreciate you joining me here thank you awesome i Have will uh oh hold on no that's not what i wanted uh hey there welcome to one take powered by backers right? no 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 judging yeah no judging. And the millennials are really changing that that uh, is charm no <laughs> all success begins with desire i feel like i'm on fire right now omg baby